All right, we're in Building 50, IE Land. For you. My name is Dean Hakamovich. I'm the general manager of the Internet Explorer team. Cool. And now, oh, oh, sorry. Formal introductions here. <laughs> I'm Chris Wilson. I'm platform architect on the IE team. So the IE team still exists. Let's just get it right out of, out of the way right oh, now. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. Well, there's this thread on Channel 9 where the, where the Niners are talking about, is the IE team still there? They've been awfully quiet. We're... We've been busy. Absolutely. So what have you been busy working on? What's going on? Well, there, there have been a bunch of things since i7 released. Uh, Windows Vista. For oh, one. yeah. Heard of that. Uh, since Windows Vista, there's been a lot of servicing and securing. There's been Vista SP1. Uh, but most of all, there's been IE8. Mm. And a lot of work on IE8. Excellent. And uh, last week, we hit an exciting milestone mm -hmm. uh, that really concerns web developers. And we should, we should talk about that in a moment, because this is Channel 9. This is all about developers, right? Amen. But before we, before we touch on that, we should just be clear that um, I8, uh, I8 is, is, is a strong release, and there, there are a lot of things for a lot of people. I mean, there are a lot of things for end users, for web service providers, for, uh, for developers, for IT pros. And there are a lot of things that we aren't going to talk about right now, because this is Channel 9. Mm -hmm. And it's Channel 9, we're going to talk about the dev stuff. Okay. Um, given how long Chris Wilson has been working on this, I think I should let him make the actual verbal video announcement. What happened last week? So last week, for the first time, we actually had a, a build of IE that uh, rendered a nice, pretty, yellow smiley face uh, <laughs> on the ASA2 test page. Excellent. Yeah. Which pretty means exciting. that it's standards compliant? I mean, well, what does it mean? So the ASA2 test, actually, it's, it's a collection of tests, a very large collection of tests. And mm. We broke this down, figured out all of the pieces that we weren't supporting. Some of them were bugs. A lot of them were actually very large features that we hadn't implemented in IE yet. Mm. And uh, a lot of cascading style sheet features, um, some HTML features, some extra things like the, the data URL support mm. that you needed to do all in order to get this one nice little smiley face. It's kind of a torture test. It really is a torture ways. test. Uh, yes. Or maybe tongue twisters. Uh, tongue twister is even better, yes. Yeah. Same as <laughs> so there's, so there, there really is a lot of subtlety um, in the ACID2 test. Mm. And, you know, it's, it's good subtlety. It's what one set of people feels very, very strongly about, mm -hmm. saying, look, this is what we'd like to be able to use on the web. Mm -hmm. but, but it's interesting. If you go through and you read all the details about the ACID2 test, they're very clear that uh, it's not a standards compliance test. Uh, mm -hmm. It's not like if you pass this, then the following is true. Mm -hmm. It's it, it it's it's a real world torture tongue twisting test, and it's super exciting, Excellent. super exciting that, that that it works. Congratulations, Thank you. that's that's good news. So you guys busted open Triton, uh, Triton. Uh, that's the code name for IE nine. Sorry, yeah. I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh man, I'm gonna leave that in there. You can so, leave it in there. So uh, the. In order to actually get this done, you guys had to write a fair amount of code. You had oh, to yes. go into MSHTML, you had Absolutely, to open up yes. Trident, not Triton, which is, has no meaning. <laughs> and um, so let's talk a little bit about, uh, we're going to meet some devs, which mm -hmm. is really cool. Um, let's talk a little bit about, you actually have an interesting history because you uh, were part of the people who created Mosaic. Mosaic. Yes. And you also yeah. sit on the CSS standards compliance board. I do. I actually uh, co-chair the CSS or the HTML working group. I, I sit occasionally on the CSS working group mm -hmm. and a couple of other ones, but we've got other people covering those too. So, so I mean, this kind of leads into the more general topic of uh, what, why is standards compliance so important to the web development community and, and in general, in your opinion? I mean, let's talk a little bit. I know. About that. I know. Call on me. I, I Call want to see me. if Dean knows the answer to this. <laughs> I think he does. Okay. So I've been working on IE for a couple of years, mm -hmm. and it's great because as I go to different conferences or talk to you know, different folks, whether it's you know, Eric Meyer, Dave Shea, it's, mm. it's great because they always get this look on, 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 on their face whenever they actually hear me say that standards are important, and mm -hmm. they usually follow up with Chris's question, well, why do you yeah. think that they're important? And really, the overriding goal is interoperability, mm -hmm. right? I, as a developer, right now I've got my own pages and my own domains registered and my own sites. Mm -hmm. I want to write a site once. I'd really prefer to not have to rewrite it a little bit this way for this browser, a little bit that way for that other browser. Mm -hmm. right? And so interoperability is huge. That, that really is the end goal. That's the dream. And a lot of people have uh, this dream around interoperability, and I think that would 
with every day, with every month, with every release, right? We get closer to that interoperability mm -hmm. um, end goal. And standards, I think, are a crucial means to that end. Right? You go through and you define a standard, and then people understand how it should work. Understood. Now, at, at the same time, wow, there are a lot of different kinds of standards, and there are a lot of different um, there are a lot of different subtleties. Uh, to, to standards. I mean, you've you've given enough talks about some of the flavors of standards. Mm -hmm. uh, there's there's um, there's open standards, of course. There are open standards, de facto standards, de jure standards. I mean, even <laughs> even proprietary systems at some point do become standards in one form or another. Hmm. Yeah. So there's standard standards. There's standards. There, there's standards. you know the great thing about the standards is there's so many to choose from. Yes. Interesting. So now, what about one of the things I remember uh, with IE, IE uh, in the early days when I first started work, started working at Microsoft. I was a web developer, and you, the, you guys really innovated, sort of a, sort of a platform, mm -hmm. right? It was different than just HTML, some JScript, and whatever. You actually decided to make a, a kind of a development platform out of it, and you added all these new selectors and stuff mm -hmm. for CSS, mm -hmm. which actually were really interesting, um, but they weren't standards compliant, and so. You know, you now have millions and millions of web pages that may use those uh, selectors. In the case of CSS, um, how do you how do you innovate and then also maintain compatibility at the same time? Well, that's that's always a big challenge. Um, if you look at some of the things that we've done in the past, like a, a great you know the the, the easily the uh, obvious poster child demo of, of the of how proprietary and, and innovation and standards all work together mm -hmm. is the X and AJAX. So the X and AJAX is XML HTTP request. It's this IE proprietary feature we delivered back in, I think it was 1998. Mm -hmm. And um, it just allowed web developers to go request data from different pages, like not just the, the page they were on, not just you know inserting a new image or whatever, but actually getting data from somewhere else and then doing something interesting with that data. They could update the page they were on dynamically by going and requesting data and then transforming the data somehow and sticking it back in the page. Mm -hmm. And um, this has now actually been picked up by the W3C. It's being, being uh, sort of specified as an actual recommendation of the W3C at some point. It's in that process at least. And um, a number of the other major browsers have implemented this for some time. Mm -hmm. they, they already support this and this works across browsers. It's interoperable in that case. It's more important, in fact, that it's interoperable than getting that you know piece of paper that says, "Oh, you're you're some you know gold standard because you have a piece of paper." Mm -hmm. The interoperability across multiple browsers is what web developers have found so compelling about that. Outstanding. At the at the same point, actually going through the standards process for some things is absolutely crucial and important. Absolutely, yeah. I, I think one of the challenges, of course, is that. When you go through the standards process, it's not just some process of, of you know, getting a stamp on something, um, particularly with web standards, the way that they've historically been developed um, in a fairly open environment with a lot of different people participating in that. A lot of different, you know, we get web developers in those groups, we get browser implementers, we get people who implement other kinds of systems that have to use that content, and they all have to, to figure out what the right thing to do is together. You don't just get one perspective of one set of people. Um, getting those those multiple perspectives just builds a stronger stronger specification. Absolutely, and we've always been a pretty vocal uh, component in the standards bodies, right? My, being Microsoft. Well, you know, we we participate in a bunch of there there are several very important groups. W three C comes to mind. ECMA uh, comes to mind as well. Um, the IETF, IEEE, ISO. Um, you know, Chris, as we said, is the co-chair of the HTML working group. Yep. And so Chris gets to spend a lot of his time on IRC channels mm -hmm. and on conference calls, okay. trying to make sure the the right thing happens for the web. Outstanding. But 